morning, everybody. Nick Powell's publisher of 1851franchise.com. Very excited to have you with us today for this conversation. Uh, Wayne and Charlie, I'm going to invite you into our feed. Um, Wayne, I want you to position today's conversation. We have a large audience of people that are thinking about joining the Regis IWG family, um, and they are looking to look talk to someone, hear from someone who has already done this. So can you frame our conversation today? And then Charlie, I'm going to let you tell your story and how you got even connected with IWG. Yes, yeah, certainly, Nick, and appreciate the time again today. And, and welcome, Charlie. Wonderful having you as well here on, on, on our call today. Um, I have to say, Nick, we've had an opportunity now to engage with our audience multiple times over the last 12 months. And uh, I think what we're seeing from the interest in the time today is this is driving, I think, the highest amount of, of demand and interest when it comes to engaging in conversation around what the future of work is looking like. Um, and I'll just frame it a little bit. It, in the last, last 34 years, IWG, uh, most people know us from, our, from our, our, most, our, our most popular brands, Regis, Spaces, HQ, Signature. We've been in the business of really enabling people and companies to work in a much more flexible way. And over those 34 years, we've grown to over 4,000 locations around the world, 123 countries, now 1,500 cities and growing. But I have to say in the 10 years I've been here um, as CEO uh, across the Americas, it is remarkable what's happening today. Um, if you look at the state of the office commercial real estate world, you know, there's two words that really come to my mind. And we've been talking about this here together the last 12 months. There's, there's one word being distress and there's, there's the other word being opportunity. And we're seeing the single largest structural shift that we have seen in how, when, what, why, and where people call work in workplace. And this structural shift looks very different from, for example, the financial crisis back in 2008, um, the recession back in 2001, the challenges in the, in the mid nineties. Um, this is a structural shift that is going on today around the world and, and absolutely with across the United States and in Canada, in which more people and companies are becoming less reliant on the conventional leased workspace and more focused on ensuring that their people have a brilliant place to work as simply as accessing via an app. And that, and the biggest thing we're seeing today, one of the biggest reasons um, that's standing out over the last 12 months is the ability to live and have a better life by eradicating this idea known as the commute and companies are seeing a dramatic savings when it comes to profitability by alleviating a capital cost liability in relationship to a lease and the millions of dollars that's required to invest in building, furnishing, uh, uh, placing the IT infrastructure into place, and then just operating a workspace, right? So, so we've seen this dramatic shift and, and it's become so structurally critical for organizations to give their people the ability to live and work close together, to have that five to 15 minute commute, to be able to work close to their home, work close to their clients, close to their team members, and make work much more ubiquitous than this idea of traveling to one traditional office or headquarters five days a week. That is, that's shifting today and that will be a fundamental shift for the future um, because of how technology gives us the ability to be more untethered and how companies are becoming more geographically distributed with their teams than ever before. So over the last 12 months, we've seen this dramatic increase in demand from the companies we partner with. We, we support 8 million clients around the world. And the large percentage of those clients continue to move more of their workspace needs to Regis, Spaces, HQ, and Signature than ever before. And we're seeing a higher demand, a 40% lift in demand from companies and people 
looking for flexibility in their workspace needs. And what that's doing is it's creating this notion and idea of where workspace needs to be. And, and, and I'm really excited to have a chance to partner with Charlie today because Charlie is one of 500 partners that in the last 12 months have partnered together with IWG to bring a Regis, an HQ, a Spaces or a signature workspace into their buildings. And, and it looks differently than in terms of the construct of that agreement than what's taken place in years past. It's actually creating hospitality in space that is, for example, Charlie's investment, right? And, and, and driving revenue and monetization and ultimately premiums into that building by providing people what they need, which is frankly, access to space in a very, very different, more fluid way than ever before. So um, we've seen in a short period of time that growth accelerate. 500 partners have joined on here in the last 365 days to take space within their portfolio, their assets, their buildings, and convert that space to, to an amazing co-working flexible workspace location. Just this morning, Nick, we've already had three partners sign just this morning, right? So, so taking the time today with Charlie, I think is really powerful. We've been working towards this for a year, actually, having this opportunity and to hear from a peer, a cohort, an investor, somebody who owns real estate and has to make that decision in the face of how things are changing so dramatically to convert and understand how to drive a great return on investment in their building. So I, I'm thrilled to take that time with Charlie. And, and it's interesting to see how the state of real estate continues to shift. And I'll leave with you one last piece. Um, at the beginning of 2022, analysts predicted that vacancy rates in the US would be roughly around 11%, um, so double digits. And, and it would grow to about 13%. And it could stabilize at 13 to 13 and a half percent over the, over, the, over the next few years. What's interesting is you fast forward here, we just closed out April. Vacancy rates across the United States is at a record 16.5% in commercial office real estate. And that doesn't include shadow vacancy. What shadow vacancy is, are, is space that's under current lease agreement that's just sitting unused because companies have shifted away from using space in a very structured, way. Uh, and they've adopted flexible working arrangements for their teams, whether it's coming into an office three days a week and working somewhere other than office two days a week, right through to many organizations just being completely progressive saying, look, we're working in a flexible way. You work from where you can best achieve the goals set forth for you within our organization. And let's come together in, in, in our space when it makes sense when it's a value. So vacancy rates structurally are on the rise. 16.5% across the United States is record levels of real, estate, of real estate vacancy within the office sector. And that number is growing because the shadow vacancy is growing. And as you take a look, lens into the future over the next couple of years, there are $4 trillion worth of debt maturities that mature in the next three years, right? this industry is going through a dramatic shift. But what's interesting is office space is still heavily needed. People need and have and want the ability to get together because we're social beings by nature. But it's just being used very, very differently, more fluidly than ever before. So I'm excited to have this time today, provide a bit of an update and frankly hear from Charlie. Thanks, Nick. Sure, thanks Wayne. Uh, so Charlie, first, frame who you are, what you do, why you're even on this conversation. And then what I would like you to do is go into how you even get here. Like what, what did the pathway to making the decision to partner with IWG look like? Sure. So long story short, real estate developer owner, um, have projects in the Milwaukee, Wisconsin area. Um, the short answer, uh, how we got here, how we got teamed up with IWG um, long and short, we had a vacancy in a project that's plus or minus 100,000 feet. Um, had interest in that space from, from different users. Uh, after yeah, maybe six, nine months, 
uh, of not getting the lease to come to fruition. Uh, we had looked in the past and had talked about, had conversations about, uh, you know, experience, rolling the dice and taking a look at the co-working space. Uh, to many of the points uh, that Wayne just mentioned, um, you know, we believe this, the, 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 those same points that the, the office sector is going through a shift. Um, the whole post COVID world and office space has changed. Uh, we feel it's here to stay. Well, when the vacancy lasted, um, you know, six months, nine months, we started to dig a little deeper and say, Hey, is this an opportunity to bring in a, a, a fresh, uh, well, I'll say a new sector into the office world, into our project. Um, we teamed up with IWG, kind of started the conversations there. Uh, one thing led to the next, and you know now we have an IWG center um, in the suburbs of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So um, and, and another big, uh, I guess, asset or, or variable to us was our location and how we felt that location accommodated co-working space and the structure that IWG offered um, near a highway on and off access. Uh, just outside of downtown Milwaukee, so um, close enough where it's a 10 to 15 minute drive, but also in our market far enough out that I would consider it a suburb uh, type location. So we felt all of those boxes were checked. Um, yeah, that led us from down the road with IWG and, and uh, obviously with their, you know, their branding and, and to Wayne's point, the popularity uh, of the co-working space, we felt it was a good partnership and a, a good group to go down this path with. Charlie, give me some insight into you as a buyer journey. So we get a you get outreach from IWG. How was the initial conversation, uh, and what's going through your head when this comes about? How, take us through just the journey from first making the decision this can make sense all the way up to we are going to sign the paperwork. Yeah, first item obviously is cost, right? So the structure is a little bit different. This isn't a traditional lease agreement. Um, I have experience into other co-working spaces. I have other experience, quite honestly, with Regis with their old format, uh, the traditional lease format that many, format that many were a part of for a, for a long period of time there. So have experience uh, with some of those items. Uh, but I, you know, the, the first item is cost. So we had a space that for the most part, didn't need a ton of walls and construction. There's always stuff that needs to be moved. Most of it for us was aesthetic. So it was flooring, carpeting, um, ceiling, paint, those types of things. But, uh, you know, the first item is always cost. So that's what you drill down on. What, what is it going to cost? What, what kind of needs does an IWG, an IWG space have? And how can we accommodate those? And then at the end of the day, what is that number? Uh, an investment that we're going to have to contribute to get this thing off the ground. Um, you know, our, our ownership group is, uh, I would say, uh, has extensive experience. So co-working space and office space is nothing new to us. Um, the decision was, hey, is this a good time? Um, and the short answer is, it, it was just great for diversification, bringing that new sector into a project, um, you know, a larger project of 100,000 square feet plus we just felt was a great fit. During your due diligence, you've made a decision, you've had these conversations, you're you're doing your homework before you're signing this, this paperwork. Was there anything that tripped you up in the process of due diligence that you had to overcome? And then how did you overcome it? Yeah, of course. Um, I would say the largest item uh, that I, most people are experiencing in today's world, again, not to... Uh, sound like a broken record, but it's cost, construction cost. Uh, those costs continue to rise. Um, you know, labor shortage tends to be a struggle, all those types of things. Um, I wouldn't say unique to IWG, but more specific just to the construction world uh, as a whole. So long and short, that was our biggest hurdle and our biggest hiccup, uh, working through the process of turning over a space to IWG that we felt they could be successful with. Long and short, that investment ended up being a little bit more than we expected, but we also got a product that reflects that cost, and we're happy with that product. Uh, and, and again, we're, we're in the early stages here, uh, just out of the gate, but hopefully that additional capital contribution turns into success for the IWG folks in this space. So, Wayne, we're, we're 
we're not talking hypotheticals here. We're talking many deals have been closed. And I would imagine where Charlie Charlie's journey as a buyer is very similar to others who have gone through this. Are you seeing the same concerns if someone's sitting on the sideline and they're coming overcoming costs and charlie just said like you can see he can see the product that came out of pain a little bit more but is this a consistency and then how are you coaching uh some of the buyers through the process some of the partners through the process of overcoming some of their fears when it relates to doing this uh, it's a great question and i think charlie nailed it um it's a, it's such a dynamic environment right now when you think about we're still working through supply chain gaps here across the U.S. and in Canada. And Charlie is exactly, exactly correct. Um, labor is still shortage. Uh, and what's interesting is we work very closely with each partner like Charlie to lay out the construction cost model, to take a look at what the current state condition is of the space. It could be shell space. It could be space that, you know, to Charlie's point, his space needed some it needed some more aesthetic uh and then just the finishing touches to really convert that to a, a true operating co-working flexible workspace uh, location because if you think flexible workspace is interesting it's it's more than just demising walls and 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 having having um tenants take on smaller space it's true hospitality right when they walk in they're they're engaging with a team member who's there to support both them their team members and their clients, right? So uh, they're really concierges, both both for the center as well as for the local community that that they serve. So, um, so we work closely around the construction model. It is amazing how fluid it can be because because there's still such a heightened demand for for GCs for general contractors around around the U.S. I don't know if you agree, uh, Charlie or not, but yeah, we we're seeing with partners some some of our partners. They're new to construction. They own assets. They own buildings. Some partners, um, they have a deep level of history and engagement in construction it, to the point where they own construction firms as well. But they're still engaging subs. They, they may actually engage a, a PM or a GC as well. So it's really dynamic. Like What we're finding is the costs move on an ongoing basis. So what, what we've been doing is a few things to try to address it. Number one, we assign an IWG dedicated construction and design project manager to every single project. So that way, every owner and their team, so Charlie and his team, they have an IWG veteran project manager who for us on average, they have upwards of 20 years of experience building these, right? So um, they're assigned to make sure they're there to help support value engineering, the, uh, the floor plan, the build out, uh, making sure that our partners have access to all of our global, uh, all of our global suppliers. So that way they can leverage um, costing that may not necessarily be available for the, the individual one-off operator. Um, and, um, and then also really look at that floor plan to take a look to see you know, what can we keep and then where can we make the best investment that's gonna drive the best return. And that piece is really critical. So, so we assign a dedicated project manager alongside a project coordinator who's there to help facilitate the job to move forward efficiently. Because the other big piece that we that we saw early on with with our early partners is um, our goal is to get the center, the, the new flexible workspace location, open from the point of signature to eight to twelve weeks later, and that was rarely accomplished with our early centers because there's so much work and back and forth that was going in. Plus you had to finalize a floor plan, then in turn, lock in your construction design. And then from there, uh, your drawings. And then from there, get your permits and then get into action, right? With your GC and your subs to build. So, so we really took it some time to make sure that we also assign a dedicated project coordinator. Um, that person's there really to track every single detail between the partner as well as our own internal organization, right? To, to make sure that the project continues to move forward. Because frankly, our goal, we want to drive um, as much immediate cash flow into Charlie's building, right? Right now, today, that space was empty. It's vacant. That means Charlie and every other building owner, 
they're still paying their taxes, their utilities, all of their OPEX costs. That's a sunken cost while they're trying to hope for and negotiate a lease, right? So our goal is to get open with a brilliant space that's going to drive immediate cash flow and then start driving income as the center continues to mature. And then ultimately our goal is to turn Charlie and every building owner partner's location into what we've traditionally done with our, with our traditional corporate locations, which is drive a premium over the gross rent, right? Because that's how we built our business for years. Our business is a great return on net capital business. The reality is the reason why we're doing this with partners is we're taking traditional investment in capital leases and, and build outs, and we're investing into digital platform, IT, infrastructure, sales, marketing, all the tools that we know we're seeing is moving forward in the world because this business of office space is looking more and more like Airbnb and Marriott Bonvoy every single day. It's a platform-based business where companies, I'm talking companies, the large Fortune 500 organizations, right through to individuals who are starting up their first business, they're looking for office space as simply as going online. And they want to book it. They want to provide, they want to provision it fast versus going through long arbitrary processes because it's all about flexibility and being nimble now. So, so for us, a dedicated, a dedicated project coordinator, a dedicated project manager, wrapping their arms around Charlie and the partners really helps. Now, the other thing we've done, Nick, is we've learned from, from our, our early partners in which it's interesting when, when you're building and launching and deploying a co-working location, a flexible workspace location, there's one side, which is, let's call it the cat A work um, or the, the build out work, right? To make sure that you have the right space to monetize your offices, your meeting rooms, your club space, your phone booths, everything else that's involved in terms of the structure element. But what's interesting is there's a whole other host of like tools, equipment, amenities, and consumables, right? So when you're building a space like this, what we were seeing from our partners was we were tasking our partners, not just to build a location, but also go find the coffee beans. It's far too much work, right? And what we've done is we've created, we're trying to make it as simple as possible and as cost effective as possible for our partners to be able to build, design, construct, and launch as successfully as possible. So we've designed what we call a new center starter kit. And it's, it's essentially a flexible workspace in a box. And we've set we've, that the, the items within the starter kit are representative of 16 different vendors that are required to be part of launching the center. And, and it comes down to everything from, um, from pr procuring and organizing the office supplies that need to be in the center, because this is an active workspace right from the coffee machines to the consumables, to the equipment, the copier that gets connected via our cloud-based technology. So every one of the 8 million IWG clients, whether they go to Charlie's location in Milwaukee or to one of 12 locations in Dubai, they're able to easily access all of their tools. They can print anywhere they go. They can send projects across team members around the world. It's all about cloud-based efficiency. Right? So all of that equipment and the consumables are required in order to be able to activate and manage the center on our portfolio. So instead of having our partners have to go out and source all of those items, work through credit applications, um, negotiate pricing, we just package it up in one very simple package to reduce costs and save, frankly, an extraordinary amount of time. If I'm a building owner, I don't want to talk to 16 different vendors trying to figure this out. What I want to do is turn to IWG and say, look, I'm going to make the capital investment. You make, let's make sure we maximize every dollar. Let's get this thing open and let's start driving revenue. All right, Charlie, this is going to turn into uh, like an Aaron Rodgers uh, press conference in a second. You got like 400 <laughs> questions that are now coming at your way. So let me, let me read through some of these so that you can give uh some viewpoints. 
Um, how did you fund the construction costs? Did you have lender support? Um, again, to go back to my comments from before, construction ever, no secret. Construction's higher, prices are, are, are running higher than, than they have in, in the recent past. So uh, construction did come in a little bit higher than we budgeted, somewhat expected. Wasn't a big surprise to us. Um, we, we uh, in, in this particular project, didn't need lender support. Um, so, but uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, next one, uh, how much more of an investment was the IWG project compared to the other TI you may have had to contribute to another tenant in that space? Similar. Uh, those prices across the board, um, whether for this space or other office space, are, I would say, right on par with where the market is today. Okay. Uh, another one, uh, did you receive the revenue that was projected for your site? Yeah, so we're in the early stages yet. We're just out of the gate in our first quarter. Um, I will say our first quarter, we are further ahead than I had expected. Um, but long and short, the verdict is still out. We obviously, you know, we're in the infant stages here. We're, uh, I believe, heading on the right path in the right direction. Um, again, first quarter was better than we thought, but we'll see how the, the next three go and beyond. Um, was there any difference in depreciating uh, the improvements you made versus that done for uh, this on a traditional lease? Very similar. Um, went through our accounting system in, in that regard, the same as any other build out, whether you know there was a lease in place or not. Okay. Um, how long has it taken for your new center to hit the, or how long will it take to hit the 70 to 80% occupancy when you guys opened? What percent occupancy did you begin with and how is that hitting your expectations? Um, to hit our, the number of 75, 85% that you threw out within 12 months, uh, possibly sooner. Um, we were... Uh, we achieved 25% occupancy in the first quarter, which quite honestly, from our perspective, was a great achievement and was above and beyond our expectations. Um, so yeah, we are, we're being told right now, probably fall to uh, maybe winter would be a really safe bet. Um, and I can tell you if we hit those numbers in that time frame, um, it, it'll be a, it'll be a success to us. Okay, I mean, based on what I'm hearing from you, this this is hitting or surpassing your expectations from when you were going through the sales process, and from a structural standpoint, now that you're you're in this, if you reflect backwards, if you backcast, is there anything you wish you would have known in the in the process that could be influential to someone who may be watching this? Yeah, pre-construction. Um, so there there are things that we you add along the way to um, you know add amenities or, or, or better finishes or, um, you know, things along those lines to, to just add that uh, finishing touch to the suite. Uh, but again, this isn't necessarily um, specific to IWG. It's just a construction process as a whole. Um, just pre-construction, maybe having a better idea of, hey, here's what we're going to do and, and here's the plan. And we did a good job. We felt we did a good job of that. But again, it, it's most some of this was our decision to to go above and beyond to give the IWG platform and their their folks um, an opportunity to be successful. So the additional investment, in our opinion, was well spent. Um, but you know, it, it's just uh, going through that pre-construction process, and and um, you know, everybody, whether it's IWG project or any other construction project. These are just some of the pains that the market bears, you know, due to the current environment. But um, yeah, just pre-construction would be the, my, my only comment. Do you wish you would have known about this earlier? I mean, obviously it hits you during a time where it, it, it's right on par with what you're looking for, but now that you've been in it, is this something that should have hit you or you should have been aware of earlier than uh, now? To Wayne's comments, um, we have experience in it. it. It wasn't a news flash to us. We have build outs going at all times. Um, if you're someone who doesn't have experience in it, I think the pain may have been a little more severe. Um, just some of the uncertainties um, are a little bit more out of left field than, than they are for you know a group that has experience in, in office space and building out office space. So I, I wouldn't say it was a significant surprise to us. 
um, it, it's just one of those uh, ways for us to complain uh, about the current state of the market where we're in in construction costs. So um, all in all, uh, it, it's been pretty smooth and pretty successful. But again, we're, we're in the business. So um, it, it wasn't it wasn't news to us. Uh, Wayne, question over for you. How does Regis market their managed spaces to potential virtual office tenant, or is the virtual office concept inapplicable uh, to most spaces? It, it's 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 critical actually to all spaces. Um, so the virtual office product and concept is actually our second largest revenue line uh, across all of our locations. And by the way, whether it's a corporate or partner location, it doesn't matter. It's completely agnostic to everybody within the organization outside of the partner and our leadership team, right? So um, the virtual office product is actually growing at a very fast rate. And it started growing uh, back when the pandemic started. Uh, we, saw, we saw obviously demand for office drop because people were working from home at that time, primarily because of all the reasons why we know. Virtual office had been growing to offset it. And we thought that virtual office would start to slow down as the pandemic subsided. The, the virtual office is still growing a point a month. It's really remarkable how fast it's growing. I think the reason why is we're seeing a few things. One, um, more and more companies are leaning on having virtual offices from a brand and an image perspective. Two, it's a critical element towards Google search analytics. And most companies, when it comes to sales and marketing, really invest in Google uh, to help drive demand for their for their core competency businesses. So virtual office provides that that, that address that's that's so deeply required from a Google perspective. Um, and then thirdly, because more companies are more geographically distributed than ever before, what's happening now is companies are hiring less people to uh, within the one city that the headquarters is based. And now positions are being posted much more remotely where they're just looking for the best person for the role. Because of that, they're, they're providing that individual, that team member with either physical space, co-working memberships, et cetera, right through to a virtual office. Um, so that virtual office comes with day offices and in ways to use the network in a very fluid fashion. So, so virtual office is absolutely the fastest growing well, one of the fastest growing revenue drivers we have, and it already represents roughly about 30% of the total revenue. So it's it's a really good question from, from, the, uh, from the person who inquired. Because to give you one last point, um, if you look at our business, because we have a state of maturity over these three decades, the, over 30% of our total revenue that comes through the waterfall is linked towards... Um, non-residential revenues and by residential revenue simply put that's somebody who rents an office or a membership within the center right and then 30 and then the other 30 percent is from a whole host of lines like meeting room revenue virtual office revenue catering revenue everything that's involved within the center outside of the residents um, virtual office is the biggest driver of that and as we continue to see more partners um, join on, it expands the network. It actually drives more demand for virtual office because more, more and more companies are looking for virtual office locations in places that frankly, we actually don't have a center yet, right? And we have 1300 locations right now across the US. So, so it's a fast growing driver and it's growing quickly in our partner locations. Hey, Wayne, another question for you. Does IWG provide specific local market analysts, uh, analysis information to prospective owners prior to the engagement? Yeah, it's a really interesting question. So we do two things. One, um, we're actually working right now with a company to try to provide more targeted analytics within the uh, within the very specific neighborhood or market or city. Um, and that comes in the form of demographics and firmographics, um, just to help probably pinpoint a little more around demand. So I think a lot of partners are usually asking the question, why do you think my building is going to be successful? And, and we get it. This is an investment. Um, so that's one. So we are working with, with a company right now coming up with, I think, better logic to provide it. Um, secondly, we do have demand details um, of inquiries that come in. So to give you an idea, we receive 1.4 million inquiries a year globally 
and that's just people, companies and, and org organizations and actually direct end users who are reaching out to us explicitly looking for space. That number has gone up from a million uh, a year pre-pandemic. So it's a 40% increase. That is geo-targeted right down to the very city where that request is being made. And we can provide that type of data to potential partners to give them an idea. But, but I'm gonna add one last piece and I mean this sincerely. Um, this is an industry that is slated to become 30% of commercial real estate um, portfolios by 2030. Um, today, it's less than 4%. And the demand is not hyper-concentrated in places like downtown San Francisco and Manhattan or the traditional central business districts. It's actually remarkably spread out across cities, towns, neighborhoods, suburbs. If we look at our current network portfolio, we operate in essentially every major financial district in North America. But the reality is the large percentage of our, uh, large percentage of our locations are in suburbs and, and, and tertiary markets because people want workspace where they live. And so, so we can provide some data, but what's interesting is Frankly, the, the, the industry is growing so quickly, we can't keep up with the demand, right? Which is why we've been why we've been incorporating this new strategy. Charlie, what does your IWG future look like? Where are you going to go with this? Obviously, you you're in building ownership, construction. Like, where do you see this going in the future? Uh, is this an expanding relationship? Yeah, I mean, for us, like I said, we're in the infant stages, but. Uh, we're in plus or minus 12,000 feet. We feel very good on that size space and what we came to market with out of the gate. Um, we do have adjacent space that I won't necessarily say is teed up for expansion, but is in our plan where if success is achieved, we will have it as an option to expand this space. To Wayne's point, you know, again, I, I think we think our ownership group thinks that you know, co-working space is here to stay. It's a subsector of the office market that's going to be here. It's not going anywhere. Uh, we can see the growth and we have data in other projects and other markets that prove that and, and kind of prove that model. Um, so, yeah, I think, uh, again, if the, the proof is in the pudding. If the data is there uh, to expand for us would be a pretty easy decision. Okay, great. Love it. And Wayne, take us home with this one. Just tell us the, the audience that's watching this. What should they be thinking about next? Obviously, you let off by saying 500 deals executed. It's it is it is coming. What should this audience be thinking about? If you want to give them a takeaway message, look across your portfolio, see what it looks like for the next couple of years, um, and ask yourself how are you starting to shift your space based on the demand that's coming in. What I hear from partners every day is they're seeing an accelerated number of requests coming in for small space. They're seeing direct requests coming in for co-working space because of flexibility. Um, and start look pragmatically at your portfolio um, because this industry, the sector is changing so dramatically. Um, and it doesn't need to be polarizing. It doesn't need to be 1% to 100%. Frankly, look at 10% of your portfolio and ask yourself, do we take 10% and do we, do we, do we attempt and try to activate our building, right? Because this is beyond just looking at a lease or not a lease. It's actually activating the building, driving vibrancy and engagement, and most critically, return on investment, right? It's cash flow. So, and it's return. Take a subset of it, take 10% and let's try it together. Let us prove why what we've been doing for 35 years works from a great return on that capital perspective. And, and you know, I was thinking about this this morning. At some point, investors had looked and said, I think there are too many McDonald's. Yeah, and the interesting thing is looking back, I'm sure people would regret that decision of not making the investment. This is an industry and a sector that although we've been in it for 35 years and we're essentially it was the, the grandparents of this industry 
yet we have a diversified brand portfolio. This is an industry that's in literally the bottom of the first inning. And if you look at this movement from 3% to 30% of commercial real estate moving towards portfolios, uh, towards flexibility, this is absolutely happening. And now is the time to, to really take that step within the portfolio and start to engage together with IWG. Let us turn that space into something that's brilliant and drive return on investment. There you have it, guys. Great conversation. Uh, very active audience. Um, more to follow for Charlie and Wayne. I'm Nick Powell's. Thanks for spending some time with us learning more about IWG and obviously Charlie's journey uh, to joining the business. Thank you, guys.